Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to the LMDE review. And now previously I showed you how to install Linux Mint Debian Edition and in this video I am going to have a look around and try and work out what's the difference between Linux Mint Debian Edition and Linux Mint Main Edition which is Ubuntu based and to see if there are any intricacies that you need to know about. Now obviously there are going to be differences because one's Debian one's Ubuntu but how that affects your general day-to-day -day usage we'll find out as we go along so this is the first screen you'll get to and before we go through the welcome steps I'm going to check out the hardware situation so down here you can see it has picked up my Wi-Fi so I can click that and I can connect to my Wi-Fi perfectly well now we're going to try out Bluetooth to see if that works. So Bluetooth is enabled down here. And it's asked a message, should Bluetooth get enabled automatically? I'm going to minimize the welcome so we can see this. And I'm going to say yes. And then we're going to search for devices. It took a few attempts, but it did finally come up with my Bluetooth speakers. And I can click that. connecting and that's connected so Bluetooth is working okay and finally for hardware let's look at the printing situation and you see it's found my printer okay so hardware is working as well on Linux Mint Debian Edition as it does on the normal edition so let's go through the setup steps so as before you can change your desktop colors um, so this is exactly the same as it was for Linux Mint Ordinary Edition, but we have got this multimedia codec, so we're going to launch that one. And this will enable you to play certain video formats and things like that, and audio formats, so it's worth installing. And now we're going to click Continue. Now the main uh, issue you might find with Linux Mint Debian Edition is if it's based on Debian uh, then Debian is going to be slightly behind Ubuntu when it comes to uh, the hardware support. So it might be that if you have newer hardware it's less likely to work on Linux Mint Debian Edition. But you can see when I tried that it all worked perfectly fine um, so it was this, I had the same experience by both ed editions. So themes works the same as it did before even though I seem to have multiple of them open now uh, yes so you can choose any of the themes mixed dark or light you got system snapshots which is again still time shift I don't think functionally you're gonna get much of a difference between Linux Mint Ubuntu and Linux Mint Debian uh, yes you can see that works the same way as it does for Ubuntu and you've got your update manager and apparently I have to update the update manager it's quite a novel thing and these are all the updates available so I'm going to install those now whilst that's doing that we can look at other things you've got the firewall which you can enable if you so wish just by clicking this button here and if you don't want this welcome at startup you can click this button here like that now we can look at the desktop wallpaper so I'm going to do change desktop background and these are the default mint wallpapers but you've also got these ones here from different countries And you got some from Vera and from Victoria. You can of course insert your own images and make them your own background if you so wish. Let's look at the software situation. So we've got all the same things that you'd have on Ubuntu 
and mainly you've got Firefox, Thunderbird, you've got this web apps thing. Uh, again, check out my other video to do with um, setting up uh, Linux Mint and you'll see all of this in action. Uh, but essentially if you go into web apps, I've got another video coming out about web apps as well. Uh, if I click here, I can call it Everyday Linux User. I put in the path, in this case youtube.com give it a category and you can choose which files you want to use you can choose whether there's a navigation bar or it's a private window or not and then you can click OK and you can launch that from here or you can go into your sound and video you should be able to go into your sound and video it should appear here but it's not for some reason close that see if it does it so that's one small difference between Linux Mint and Linux Mint Debian Edition you can only run web apps from within the web app itself by the looks of it and there you are it's running my YouTube channel as if it's a web application and you can use that for all sorts of things like if you wanted to use Office Online or um, Google Docs or one of those other applications. So this is the video I'm talking about, the ultimate complete Linux Mint guide. This is what you want to follow after installing Linux Mint Debian Edition or indeed the official Linux Mint Ubuntu Edition. So you have a BitTorrent client, you have the full LibreOffice suite. You have Hypnotics. That's um, which is like a TV app. This is the one thing I didn't find worked that well. But in theory, you can watch TVs and films from different online services. And then you've also got uh, Rhythmbox for listening to music and Celluloid for watching videos. So the update is now finished, and you can see it says it requires a reboot. You can also see that it's got this switch to local mirror, so I'm going to click yes for that. And this will enable me to pick a mirror closer to where I live rather than the default one. And you can see it's telling me the speed of each one, so quite clearly that's the one to go for, so I'm going to click apply to that. Uh, system's up to date, I'm just going to reboot the computer. Now I've rebooted, I've got all the updates installed. If I go into my sound and vision, you can see the Everyday Linux user link is now there. And you see that loads as before. So not only do I have, uh, can I use the web apps to launch the application, I can also use the sound and video, the category that I put it under. So if you want to install more applications, you have to click on this icon here. You can also search for Software Manager, and it's there. So here we are, let's see what's available by default. Now under the Featured section you've got all your classics like uh, GIMP, Spotify, Telegram, Discord, a thing called FreeTube which enables you to watch YouTube for free. But that's not the stuff we're interested in. Let's see if we can find things like Chrome. Uh, Chromium's available by default, but Chrome isn't. And let's look for Steam as well. And Steam is there. And I'd imagine this is the Debian package. Yeah, it is. So we probably have to turn flat packs on. So if we go into preferences and show unverified flat packs, it says not recommended, but realistically, that's where all the good flat packs are. And now Chrome is available. You'll get the Steam flat pack as well. You'll get um, all, all the other flat packs that you, you might need across the board. So that will give you access to a lot more software than just the Debian packages. 
So all in all, this is a bit of a whirlwind tour of Linux Mint Debian Edition. I'm going to leave it installed on this machine for a week, see if I can find anything that might go wrong with it. But essentially, it works exactly the same way as the Ubuntu version. The install is slightly different, perhaps. And we know that the base packages are coming from a different place because they're coming from the Debian repositories rather than the Ubuntu ones. But uh, by and large, Linux Mint Debian Edition, Linux Mint Ubuntu, it's a personal decision which one you choose. Now me personally, I'm going to stick with the Ubuntu version of Linux Mint uh, because that's the main version and I'm not anti-Ubuntu in any way whatsoever. And I just think it's going to give you that little bit extra level of support that you're probably not going to quite get with the Linux Mint Debian Edition. Correct me if you think I am wrong on this. Anyway, that's the end of this review. If you like it, give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.